How's it going fellow reloaders? Thanks for joining. Today we're gonna to do something pretty cool with the Breach Lock Pro. I got in the mail a few days ago from Treetop Flyer. Uh, Treetop Flyer is another great YouTube channel. You guys should check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. But basically he makes these stands for a lot of presses including the lead presses and it allows you to put a powder measuring system off to the side where you can swivel this away that way it doesn't take up one of your stations or get in the way. So stay tuned if you're interested to see about the stand, how this works. And also, we are going to completely disassemble the Breach Lock Pro because it requires uh, me to take off the carrier in order to put the stand. So I'm going to show you guys, if you're interested, the complete disassembly of the Breach Lock Pro. If you want to get into the nooks and crannies to clean all your stuff up, uh, stay tuned. Lee provides you all the tools necessary besides a Phillips screwdriver to pretty much disassemble this press. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove your dies. This being a breech lock system, that's pretty simple. Quarter twist of a turn, remove the bushings. Uh, lift up your ram and remove your indexing rod. Now, you have three Allen heads to remove in order to remove the top plate. So we're going to go ahead and loosen those up. Those do take quite a bit of force. So don't worry, there is no thread locker. You just kind of got to put your purse down, give it a good force, and go counterclockwise, you'll break them loose. So remove these three screws, and I'll show you what's next. Now that you have the three Allen heads removed, go ahead and just lift up and set off to the side. You'll see that the press has the spring linkage system for the case feeder, and which we'll remove that next, which requires a Phillips screwdriver. Grab yourself a nice quality screwdriver, and we are going to remove this screw that's holding onto the case feeder. And as soon as you get to the end, what I like to do so you don't lose any of your screws is I just put it right back in. And you can remove your whole case feeder. And this linkage simply just unhooks, like so. Next, if you are using the uh, case feeder, universal case feeder, it's easy to take off, you probably already know that. Just uh, undo your bolt and remove it. Alright. And that's off. Now we can get to all the other parts in here, real easy. Um, just remove the case ejector. And the shell plate itself. Now, I usually don't ramathore this down. It's pretty just, just snug, just basically hand tight. Um, if you're at this point and you're having an issue and you can't get that off, get yourself a long screwdriver, throw it down there. And now you have yourself some some leverage to give it some muscle release, uh, to relieve that pressure. And these things are pretty cool because it's knurled right here. That way you can just give it a good twist. And remove your shell plate. The only downfall I've seen so far, I've been using H110 for my 300 blackout. When that powder does get between the shell plate and the carrier assembly, it will pretty much indent itself because this is just plastic. That was one of my concerns before buying this press. But like I said, all of it, all this damage and this issue that you're seeing here is just aesthetics. It doesn't cause an issue on the function of the press. Um, if you really don't like this, I'll show you guys pretty much how to take this off anyway. So let's continue on. Now here is going to be the tough part. This is where you're really going to have to put your purse down. And down in this, uh, in the ram itself, it is an actual Allen um, screw. So what you're going to have to do, because these things are pretty on, they're on there pretty tight. No Loctite though, like I said, it, all these presses are put together with no Loctite. You might have to get yourself a little cheater bar uh, or whatever just to get a little bit of leverage. And basically, you're going to relieve that nut that's pretty much holding the whole carrier assembly all together. What I've done in the past is I got an extension bar and a socket and made a little cheater bar out of that. But this is what I got for now. There you go. So I broke loose. If your press is brand new and you've never done this, you are really going to put a lot of pressure. But don't be afraid, you won't break it. 
Now you'll see that slot in the middle of the carrier ram. Uh, that is not for a screwdriver, that's actually for strain relief for the carrier assembly itself. So once you get this loose, you'll notice that it's going to hit that plastic overlay like so. Just get it to where it loosens up and it's free floating like that. After that, you're pretty much going to grab the carrier assembly itself, make sure your priming arm's out the way, and you're going to lift up. Make sure um, you don't snap off your little uh, hook there for your case, uh, case feeder. And there you go. Your carrier assembly is off the press. All right, so the carrier assembly. You got this plastic overlay, basically housing that goes around uh, the actual steel carrier itself. Uh, let me remove this chain out the way. It's held together by four Phillips head screwdrivers. So, what I like to do is I hold it upside down and start taking them off. Keep in mind that you do have the timing assembly right here but don't worry there's nothing too crazy involved in there so let's go ahead and take those four screw, uh, screws out and you'll see uh, it pretty much split in half point on your last screw you can split the carrier in half this plastic uh, under piece comes right off and say so all it is is just a housing and now you see your timing assembly all it is is really a cap. This is a very simple design. So take the cap off and push the center pinion out and you can remove that. And this is the cool thing about this press. It's a whole different kind of timing mechanism. Sorry for the glare. Let me see if I get this focused. All right, there we go. So it kind of looks sim similar to a, uh, let's say, rear differential pinion gear. The inside cap has also got serrations in there. And basically how this works is when the press goes up, it free this uh, cap falls down and allows this to pivot. Before you start actually manipulating the carry assembly uh, around on your hand, do note that you do have an index ball and spring that's actually inside the carrier itself. So before you tip it over and all that, the indexing um, in de uh, detent ball and spring is right there. So don't lose that. It will be in this thing. Basically just tip it over, let it fall out, catch the parts. And like I said, don't let it roll around, don't lose the spring. After that, uh, you can take off the top overlay piece, um, which if you are uh, bothered by the aesthetics, if you do happen to get ball powder in between the carrier and your shell plate, which made um, detents like that and scratches, it's very simple, just lift up and pull out. And there you go, you can call Lee and get another replacement for a few bucks shipped to you. And now all you're left with is the steel carrier assembly itself. And you can go ahead and uh, throw this in your uh, cleaner or whatever. Um, I'm not sure about a sonic cleaner, but you know, you can get to it and clean all the nooks and crannies like you want. Now as you can see, this base plate is also shared by the same Lee Value Tour Press and the Pro 1000. So if you do also have the Value Tour Press, um, that little indentation right here is for the primer arm itself. And that's basically what kicks this back into the carrier assembly and allows you to prime. So you can easily remove that. So when you, if you do have a value tour press, this is basically what you're going to see. You'll see your base plate, and you won't see your indexing rod. And uh, that's that's only proprietary for this press. But now you are pretty much bare minimum. You have the uh, the ram itself. You could take the uh, Allen screw off. And since this press is primed, uh, the the primers go through the ram. This would be a great time to get a pipe. Uh, pipe cleaner and clean out your ram and uh, get rid of all that grime from your priming dispensing system. 
Well, now I am ready to put Treetops Flyer, um, powder measure system, powder measure stand, basically onto this press. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the three bolts that are holding down on the quick change plate. All right, so those three nuts are removed. Now he made this specifically after I sent him the uh, value turret press. So like I said, they use the same base plates. Get those lined up. There we go. Let's go ahead and get the nuts back in and let's tighten this down. So I, as some of you folks already noticed, I probably uh, I already made a mistake in um, putting together treetop flyer um, powder measuring stand. I need to actually take this bar off and move it to the back side. All right, so I just removed basically the whole bar itself, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put these nuts back down, tighten them down. Now that this is all tightened down, the press is back on the quick change plate. I'm gonna leave the uh, powder stand off and let's go ahead and reassemble this bad boy. And one thing to know is that this is plastic, so don't ram a Thor down. Just uh, watch the indentation, basically, as you're tightening the machine screw down. You, you can go too much and you'll start actually indenting and over uh, exerting the plastic, in which over time will put a lot of strain and possibly crack the housing. So just snug it down to where it's nice and flush and it's not putting any more strain than needed on this housing. All right, let's reinstall the carrier assembly. Make sure you're taking mind of the actual hook and how it's oriented. So this is basically what that machine slot is on the ram, is to basically relieve tension and stress so you can actually remove this thing. If you happen to take this out, go ahead and uh, just lift up on the carrier and make sure you drop that in place before you set the uh, carrier assembly down. Like so. And push down, make sure it's nice and flush on the bottom. And we're gonna take our Allen wrench and re-tighten the carrier uh, screw. Make sure you don't cross, cross thread. Now, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and Give it a pretty good force, but don't, like I said, ram it or anything on this press. Not necessary, but you do want to make it tight. That way, if you do have a case that's giving you a hard time to uh, get out of your resizing die, that this whole carrier assembly does not slip off the, the shaft itself. So, I'm just going to give it, eh, roughly, I'd say 35 pounds torque. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> now it's easier to install your shell plate when the press is all put together so we'll do that last right now we can reinstall the actual case feeder linkage and rehook it there is a small hook side and the large hook side the large hook side goes to your case feeder itself so it hooks on there so make sure you don't mix that up small small hook side goes onto the hook and hopefully you didn't break that off if not, you're going to be calling Lee for a replacement part. So, let's get that on there. And next, you can actually put the top portion of the press back on. And reinstall your Allen machine screws. And at this point, you can reinstall your case feeder. Remove that screw. And reinstall the spring linkage. Also, you really don't want to tighten that down a lot because it will bind up the spring. You want it to pretty much free float and pivot like so. And from this point, your press is pretty much put back together other than the shell plate and the uh, case ejector. So now you can reinstall your index, index rod. Basically, you want the ram all the way down, the carrier all the way down on the bottom. Install your index rod. It should just fall in place like that and then reset up your dies accordingly the way you want it so, and from there test the function of your press your index and that indexing lock lock rod should hit 
or should flow smoothly without hitting your shelf um, carrier shell plate itself if you do feel a hit then obviously there's there's some damage on the timing mechanism in the bottom or the indexing rod itself somehow got bent and you just got to tweak the twist a little touch here a counterclockwise or clockwise to realign the actual shell plate with the, the shell plate lock so there it is um, that's the way you put the, you disassemble the breech lock pro and reassemble it um, from here you can reassemble your case feeders your dies um, of course your primer feeder and reinstall your primer feeder arm itself so let's test out to see how this uh, treetop flyer powder measuring stand works and what we could do with it so here is treetops flyer stand what's cool about it is that it is adjustable for length how tall you want to have your powder measure and it's also adjustable left to right now I do have a lot of plans for this not just for using a powder measure um, and I'm actually really happy that he got really close to this hole right here uh, this is actually on the breech lock pro it's feature where you could actually just throw a rifle case or even a pistol case down in there um, without even using the universal uh, case feeder so basically you can just, you know, throw it down in there and that little chingus arm will catch it and push it into the shell plate but I got plans on making a bullet feeder and also a case feeder um, and I will be using an arm and maybe some attachments so uh, thank you treetop flyer for this this is awesome did a great job on it um, really thought it through uh, the powder coating is very durable. I actually want to ask him what kind of coating that is because I want to coat this. So I want to coat some of my tools with this. And he thought about basically all the wear marks. These are uh, nylon washers, and like I said, it's really awesome. They're hand um, hand torqued with a nice ergonomic knob. So thank you for that, Treetop Flyer. I really appreciate it. Again, folks, if you are interested in getting one for yourself um, for your press. And if you do have the Breechlock Pro or the Pro 1000 uh, with the new base plate or the Value Turret Press, uh, he does make these um, now. So, link in the description below, check him out. Uh, check out his videos, he's doing a great job, uh, low development with all kinds of stuff and a lot of great information. Uh, the guy really thinks outside the box um, and he's very knowledgeable. Other than that folks, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, let me know what you think, uh, suggestions, comment below. Like, subscribe to the video, and again, check out Treetop Flyer. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you.